but you can't call me a chink and then all of a sudden I'm gonna go on Twitter and yeah, talk right. shit. That's no, I'm gonna say it to your face. Yeah. Get the fuck off the stage. Don't call me a chink. I'll fuck your ass up. Yeah, right. We can take this outside. Right, right. But he did some very weak pussy shit. That's that some beta shit. shit. Yeah, yeah, it is. And also, like you said, what's what's really whack about it is that he's taking something serious and yeah. attaching this to it. Like it's not. It gets really his ego's hurt, mm -hmm. so he's gonna make it about this whole thing. So he wants to, to attach this thing to yeah, make this his point even thing bigger. that's actually really shitty that's going on in this country mm -hmm. to this guy to just focus. <laughs> in five, four, three, two, one. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Genius Brain Podcast. Podcast. <laughs> we that's have the foreign. returning hosts, Nick the Ear, former mixed martial arts extraordinaire. Mm. Nah. With a record of 72s. And it's in this like a. It's, it's like, what's 72 this? and 72, actually. 72 and 72. 500 record. Straight even, because he yeah. wanted to keep it fair for everybody. Exactly. He quit MMA because he sexually harassed somebody in the cage. Bang. He went for a kiss instead of a fucking cross. <laughs> and then I got in so much trouble for yeah. it. He did. You fucked bullshit. up. Bullshit. Yeah. Fucked up bad. Bullshit. Yeah. Watch the tape. You yeah. Know what I mean? Send location so we can go on date. <laughs> That's what he said. Johnny Africa, brother. Johnny, Johnny Africa. Johnny Africa. Johnny Africa and Nick China. Yeah. <laughs> Nick, Nick China. <laughs> yo, 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 what the fuck? <laughs> Nick America, baby. Whoa. And of course, America. we got Patrick got T. Dot Riley, stand up comedian extraordinaire. Mm -hmm. Only comparison Dave Chappelle and oh. George Carlin. <laughs> oh, shit, That's bro. about it. That's it. Everybody else can suck his left nut from the backside of his ass. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> And actually, wow. third one, Jeff Dunham. Jeff he, Dunham. He does some puppet shit. It's great. I, yeah. My act is all puppets, so. <laughs> How dare you say Jeff Dunham, bro? <laughs> Which I think his Vegas act is fantastic. Cool, bro. That actually is one. He's actually one of the most, like, money-wise, has made, he's one of the richest comics out there. Really? Oh, because of the Vegas show, huh? I don't, I don't know what it is, but, like, his, his following loves him. Like, he's huge. What's the disrespect you have for Jeff Dunham? I just don't think huh? it's funny. Talking about the guy with the skeleton, the the terrorist, and the the skeleton and the terrorist. Yeah, I'm like, ha, 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 ha. You don't like that? Yeah. Nah, bro. An old guy. I don't. I don't get. It. Hey, kids like him a lot. And though. Also, I can see his mouth move. Oh, can you really? Wow. And it takes away from oh, me. let's. Oh, we're gonna talk that shit. Your hand is now a sock puppet. Go. And I want you to say something. Do do it now. Do it. Let me see your mouth. Uh, okay, hold on. Let me see your mouth. <laughs> Um, my name. Nah, yeah, that's bad, dude. You didn't even my, try. My name is. Yeah, I can't, it is hard. But also, I'm not a ventriloquist, so people who can't do always sit on their Chinese ass and judge. <laughs> yeah. Nicky China, baby. Nicky China, baby. China, baby. <laughs> we gotta make an action movie with you starring. In it. I say yeah. Nicky China. China. I still think he's very talented. That's just pretty talented. No, for sure. He's for sure talented. I, not my I don't think he's funny. But yeah, wow. is it made for adults though? I think it's made for like kids, isn't it? Uh, I don't know, to be honest. I nah, he there's says some wild shit. In the, uh, he says some wild yeah, shit. I think he does say crazy shit. Oh, really? I think so. I th he's cussing and shit. Who's the guy that uh, <clears throat> that smashes watermelons? What's his name? Gallagher. 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 Carrot Top, I think, is funny. Here's <laughs> 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 the silence. <laughs> Yo, that shit was the longest silence oh, ever, dude. I didn't really think about that for a second. I thought you were going to step in. I I don't really know any of his material, but I heard it's pretty funny. He does props. He does a he's, lot of props. He's a prop comic. He's like one of the last prop comics to ever. He like took over the prop comic game. I think he like. Yeah, and he's swole as fuck, bro. The last standing swole. prop comic, dude. He's on HGH or some shit. He's really <laughs> buff. Hey, you know who's fucking buff? If you want to talk about a comic, Who? the Kamal, Kamal dude, the fucking Indian dude. Oh, Bruce. that dude's ripped, bro. Who? He's uh, oh Kumail no Johnny, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's on ice. all the sauce, bro. Yeah, he's ripped. I wonder why. What the fuck happened? Does he think that people don't know? <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't. I don't. Why did he do that? Why did he, he get he, so jacked? He's in the Marvel movie. He's a superhero. Oh, is he? But I saw the trailer for it. He doesn't even look as jacked in the movie. Oh, he's just as continuing he is now. now. I think this is like his. He's um, on a sauce, boy. It's like his addiction now. He loves it. He's like, yeah, I look fucking good, dude. He, there was a picture. Well, of cheat him. on my wife. There's a picture of him. <laughs> I look so good. I'm going to be an infidel. <laughs> <laughs> There's a picture of him coming out of the uh, gym or something. He's wearing a tank top. This Dude. boy looks like he has garden hoses in his biceps, bro. Dude. Like, so ripped. 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 Jacked, bro. And he looks like that year round. There's no off season for And you see shit. the picture of Zach Efron? His face? Dude, what's up with his face? He looks, okay. Let me pull it up. Is it some? This dude's face looks fucking. I mean, let's just crazy. say this: when I first saw Zac Efron's, his 
very handsome man. Yeah, he's handsome. Right. I'll fuck this handsome. Yeah. Undeniably a handsome dude. Yeah, you like, cannot say he's not. If handsome. if if it was like white American handsome, he is the definition of it. Yeah, he's yeah white American. And then on sure. the Baywatch movie, this fool got ripped beyond belief. Bro, if you don't think Zac Efron is handsome, you you're in a closet, bro. You're, you're gay. gay. You're yeah. gay. I think if you're you gay. If you don't think you he's can't be fine, like, that dude's handsome and be like, oh, it's, you must be gay. Yeah, that's the gayest thing I've ever heard in my life. That's gay. Look at this picture of him. That's for real his face? Yeah, this is his face, bro. Or just some like weekend weird shit where it was like all Botox stuff. Nah, dog. Swipe. What's up with his face? That's before and Zach after. Zac I don't know what he did. What happened to him? Cool. Well, he's probably on the sauce too. But what this? why is his, his lips look like Botox or some yeah, shit? Yeah, probably that too. I don't know. Man. You think it might be jaw surgery or something too? Maybe, Maybe. something happened to he him? He looks weird, Maybe. bro. But also some dudes kind of look like that when they start doing steroids and shit. Really? What What is that part? Where, why Why is it that these dudes' hands get so fucking thick and big and their skull gets huge? Why, why do steroids do that to you? I don't know. I think that's HGH. I think it's a different type. Now, nah, bro, uh, this looks like he restructured his face. This doesn't see? look like... This looks like some weirdo shit. He looks like I'm going to smash both of them, bro. You're trying to smash both of them? Yeah, Clap both those cheeks. Why would both, he do this sets. to his already handsome face, yeah, dude? Yeah, bro. Now he looks like a crazy person. Those are crazy, dude. He looks like someone drew his face. You know what like I mean? Like mad insecurity, weirdo I, I, I shit. I hope it's just like... I hope it's, it's like a jaw fake. surgery or something and it's like swelling or I, I don't I don't know what it is, but it, it looks odd. Definitely the world that people live in when it comes to Los Angeles is not a world that other people live in, right? No. Nah, like the real. beauty standards that people have here are way different everywhere else. Like, like the Khloe Kardashian shit. Did you hear about that? No, what happened with she that? She was like upset or some shit? Yeah, or like, like talking about there was that a, There shit? was a picture of her that got leaked or something of her in a bikini and it wasn't like how Photoshopped. she looks. Like in the picture, she looks fine. Does she look like she's not wearing any makeup or anything? But like it's a picture of her in her bikini and like her body isn't like terrible. Like her, she looks fine. Yeah. You know what I mean? It looks cool. But she went on this whole thing talking about like, I don't really look like this. And she was trying to sue people that like posted it. In. Who cares, bitch? Shut up. But Who cares? also it's like, and the, the more you're trying to suppress it, the more people want to see what it's about. And then she and then she kind of claps back, posts like videos of her on Instagram of like what she really looks like. Who cares? Well, also like they created that whole exactly. Image. That's her standard that she created. But that's the thing too. Like this this girl's image, identity, and value of herself is only based on how she looks. To the point where a random photo of her, she has to go out of her way to deny that that's not even what I look like. Who the fuck cares, dude? Who bitch, cares? your shit stinks just like everybody else. Yeah. Who fucking cares? You poop out of your butt like everybody else. That's the weird thing, too. Like, these people live. I love that. That was I good. I love that, by the that way. That was good. Thank you, man. Appreciate yeah. It, it comes from the good. anus sphincter. Exactly. Yeah. Everyone's got an asshole, and you poop out of it. What Thank if she's you. like, nah. And everyone, and everyone has <laughs> pooping their pants story. And then you know she I mean? does a fucking video. She goes, you think I have anus? <laughs> <laughs> she, she bends over. Mouth, she's like, ah, ah, shit. <laughs> South Park, ah. She bends over, and it's just a crack with no hole. <laughs> yeah, she goes, I don't even have one. You guys yeah. are assuming things because you saw a video from this guy <laughs> named David Slow. <laughs> from, from Genius Brain Stupid. You're like, you know my name. You said that on purpose. Yes. You said my name wrong on purpose. Yeah, this fucking goop from Stupid Brain. He doesn't even know. I have stupid no brain. Brain, dude. <laughs> Yeah. Dumb, yeah. dumb. Brain. Yeah, dumb, I, dumb brain. Dumb, dumb right. brain. Dumb, dumb brain. Bozo brain. Burned. Burned. Yeah. Am I right? Maybe I should be a Quamic. A Quamic. Quamic. Dude, fucking Khloe Kardashian. But that's know? what I'm saying. Like these. Why'd she kill Lamar Odom though? You know. Oh. She killed Lamar Odom. Well, I mean, he's Is about he to hit. <laughs> he's about to hit that. He's about to die in that boxing. Ring. No, you know he's gonna. Oh box, yeah, he's, he's gonna, gonna box fight. somebody. Bro, he's wait, gonna, honestly, can, wait. I said that trying to be funny, but then I thought about it. I was like, wait, is Lamar Odom dead? Yeah, no. that's fucked up, bro. His, his, uh, his no, guess who's gonna fight? Guess who's, guess who's, who's gonna, gonna fight it? in a celebrity boxing match? Who? Just guess. He's You'll a, never guess in a million years. No, guess. Cele okay, it's a celebrity boxing match. Somebody in the nineties. Some for somebody from the nineties. Uh, pretty boy. Pretty boy. Teen star. Mario Lopez. Mario Lopez is way too small. That would and way younger. Oh yeah, that that's, would, yep, that's way earlier. Like that would 80s. literally make way more sense than who he's gonna fight. Because Mario pretty Lopez is from the nineties. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Like maybe him. But uh, give me one more. Uh, Dustin Diamond, you're absolutely right. Yeah, I was gonna. I was thinking that, but he's he's. Dead. I'm not sure if this is his song. He did pass away. Screech is dead. Mario, Mario Lopez literally... passed away. No, 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 Screech. no, no, no. Screech. Dustin Diamond. Dustin. Diamond. I was gonna say Screech. Dustin Diamond died. I think he like, did. I, 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 I checked my watch. Two hours. <laughs> <laughs> yep, says it right here. He Clock talking to fellas. <laughs> Seven eighty-two. <laughs> he died like months ago. Like yep. over I said, here. seven eighty-two. Like there's an eighty-two on the clock. Hey, <laughs> seven eighty-two. Yeah, seven shout eighty-two. Out this drink. Hey, we all say stupid shit today, huh? Shout seven eighty-two. <laughs> seven eighty-two. David, there's no seven eighty-two on a fucking watch. There is a you seven and eight and a two on this. Thank shit, you. But I don't think you. Put oh, it I'm embarrassed for myself. That was good though. That was good. You're hanging out with. Wait, Screech much, is bro. dead, bro. I almost said Screech, but then I was like, "Fuck, I'm gonna fulfill my my fucking shitting on a dead guy." Wait, Dustin. Dustin. He died like. uh 
months ago. I think I want to say pre COVID. <gasps> yeah, over a year. What ago. did he pass away from? I, I mean, honestly, was... I don't remember. Hey, yo, talk about a dude who had a Let's fire ass sex tape. His shit was fire. He bro. had a sex tape. You saw his sex tape? No. You fucking weirdo. Was he just was, jerking off? I, was I know. watching that one and uh, the Captain America one. <laughs> he, I mean, uh, Randy Couture. He, uh, I know he casted <laughs> his own dick for a dildo. That's, That's pretty, pretty cool. cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, yeah. Who's buying? And it? apparently, it was fucking horse size. It was huge. Wow. Yeah. yeah. He would have a fucking giant dong. I think. How did, I wrote. I, I wanted to write how to how did Screech die, and I wrote how to Screech. <laughs> uh, which, <laughs> like, like, yeah, that's, that was the yeah. deal. Um, how I had did, no idea he passed away. I don't know how he died. How did Dustin Diamond die? Wow, he's that insignificant. Where he no, we I, can't find it at all. Forty-four from small cell carcinoma. Wait, is oh, that, is that some form of cancer? Cancer. cancer. Yeah. Damn. What the that's fuck? That's how he went out. But in brighter news, uh, mm-hmm. Lamar Who, Odom's who's gonna, he boxing? He's going to box Aaron Carter, bro. Oh, I remember. What, wasn't he like a musician or some shit? He's a Backstreet Boy, no? Uh, that's his his Nick brother Carter? is Aaron Carter, right? And Nick Carter is his Wait, brother. Who the that's fuck a is Who's Aaron Carter? Aaron Carter bro. is his younger brother. So Wait, Aaron is... Carter had a he was a single solo artist, but he was oh. Nick Carter's younger brother. And he was like hopped up on drugs and shit. He went to like rehab like forty six times. <sighs> oh shit! He's gonna box Lamar Odom, bro. And he looks I don't like shit. The thing. I don't want to be the beautiful or something he, like that. Yeah, bro. He's also a buck twenty five. It seems like. He's soaking 33 wet. Thirty three years old. So he says he's six foot. Lamar Odom's how big? Seven foot nine. <laughs> seven eighty two. Okay, <laughs> he's seven eighty two. Okay. Lamar Odom, yeah. Uh, wow. Lamar, this is gonna Odom's die. Gonna... His he's boxing's cool. terrible. You know, it's not as bad as as when he first started. But fuck, man, I don't know. Wait, what? What did happen? Why, These, why is everybody little... trying to box each other, bro? Yeah, what is going? Who, on? And who's gonna pay money to watch Lamar Odom f- box Aaron Carter? Dude, Nobody six, gives a ten, fuck. Six, ten. Yeah. What the fuck? Wait, I want to see Lamar Odom boxing. It's terrible. I mean, it's it's a basketball player. You've seen them all fight. But yeah. what's up with basketball players not being able to fight at all? Because huh? they never needed to. Who's going to fuck yeah. with the guy yeah, that's, that's seven feet tall? That's yeah. true. Nobody is. They're swinging wild as shit. He looks like Anderson Silva. No, he don't. But How like, dare you? <laughs> but like, you know, he, he's long. He's long as shit. Hell yeah, he's 6'10", bro. Bro, this celebrity He's definitely going to kill S- this dude. Someone's going to sure. die, bro. Someone's going to fucking die when they do this shit. Remember Screech did box somebody, though. Did he? Yeah, Screech boxed. Um, no, that's when he challenged Mario Lopez to a, a no. wrestling match in episode in season four of Saved by the Bell. And they were competing for the, what was the name of the school? You never watched Saved by the Bell? No, I had friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. it was a very dark time in my life, you know. I actually never watched a lot of, I mean, this just sounds weird and it might sound a little racial. I never saw a lot of like white centric shit. Yeah. Like the stuff that I saw intermittently was like Full House and um, Step by Step, I believe. But my shit was like Fresh Prince of Bel Air. It yeah. was Family Matters, mm-hmm. Cosby Show, mm-hmm. uh, fucking Martin. So you didn't watch Save the Bell at all? They had they had one black person on the show. Mm. Remember mm. that episode where that white girl she got addicted to caffeine pills? You, you showed me this clip, motherfucker. What are you talking about? I don't, I honestly didn't because I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You're at crazy, all. bro. I'll, I'll pull up some text messages. Caffeine pills. Yeah, yeah. And she's going all crazy, and he has to like slap her out of it. Like you're going crazy. Like as a serious episode. Yeah, it was. A, but it was like, yo, bro, she's addicted to caffeine pills. Like, what are we talking about? It's right? just caffeine, bro. Relax. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking relax and her life her life was going to shit because she was addicted to caffeine pills yeah so from there on <laughs> stop doing caffeine pills that's the dumbest fucking thing i've ever heard in my life are you serious save mom dude save these my life. old <laughs> these old sitcoms save were so life, fucking ridiculous when they would do the uh that was during the, the dare days remember well remember that's what dare? i'm saying dare like this, so this stupid, stuff was bro. so fucking dumb they would just sit there they would have these episodes and then towards the end they go you know Drugs are really bad for you. And they would just break the fourth wall and stare into the camera. Like, this is not changing anybody's life and you're not saving anybody. But low key, though, that's where everybody got their information from. Bro, it that was, was the social media was TV shows back then. Right? So like, weird. So out of touch. There, I remember there's a video. This It's like an educational film. And it's just a classroom and this lady talking. And they're talking about sex or something like STDs, whatnot. And the, this kid raises his hand. And he's like, teacher, like, what if... So he's like, so what if I have sex before marriage? Like, what if I have sex before marriage? And she looks at him and she's like, well, then you better be prepared to die. And they just like, just kind of like, what the fuck? Bro? Well, she ain't wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know, you got to be ready to go. You got to be ready to go. You got to take every risk you can to get that boo. 
Every time you fuck, it's like some samurai well, you know, shit. If, this could be it. <laughs> if you grew up in a hyper religious household, like the thought of sex made you feel like you were literally spitting in Jesus's mouth. Mm -hmm. That's I'm crazy. That's what it made you feel like. Even yeah. for me, I'm fucking hot. I, I, <laughs> I'm so turned on right now. You're like, fuck. Whoa. I've never. So I never <laughs> cursed until, like. I never frequently cursed until I was in high school for the longest time. Whenever I said the word fuck, it literally felt like I was being pulled down to hell. Wow. Damn, look at you now, bro. You, hey, you made some fucking strides. I so. never fucking cursed. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> oh, shit. So I, damn, I started bro. cursing because I had a lot of anger issues. Uh -huh. And so every time I wasn't allowed to release my anger through words, You'd stab somebody in the I would with a pencil, just, yeah. I would either get into fights <laughs> or I would break shit. I would break everything. I would fucking, I would rip you know, photos off the wall, start yeah. punching the wall or something. And then I thought, well, why don't I just fucking just say what I feel? Yeah. And then I was just like, fuck you, fuck this shit, fuck you, bitch. And I felt better after. It's, so I was like, oh, I don't that to all break to me. things. You didn't even look at you at all. Like, the well, because he's a decent human here. being and I hate yeah. you. Yeah, you know, I did Wuhan camera. Nick over here, dude. <laughs> Speaking of Wuhan Nick, we should talk Wuhan about the Tony. Nick, dude. <laughs> we should talk about the Tony Hinchcliffe thing that happened uh. recently. Good segue. So, oh, yeah, segue. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. By the way, I never got COVID, by the way. I'm the only person. No, because you're the source. How the fuck did you get out baby. COVID? Okay. Yeah, that pangolin or whatever. Yeah, yeah, was. I was eating pangolins in my house. Eat that bro. pangolin boy. Every day. Pangolin for Thanksgiving. Pangolin. 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 Don't worry, eat my pangolin, yeah. baby. <laughs> so on, on, on Twitter recently, this this thing started going really viral. And usually what happens is when there's when there's some type of Asian person being disparaged. I get linked to it like a motherfucker because they're expecting me to go off on a tirade or something. Protect this man. Yeah. But, you know, learn to protect yourself. I will do it when I when I need to. Yeah. Right. But um, Tony Hinchcliffe, very, very popular comedian. You've probably seen him on the Joe Rogan podcast. Just as a stand up in general, he's pretty well known. Has a podcast with uh, Louis Gomez. He, Gomez. he does it with Louis. Oh, they do Louis Kill Gomez. Tony. Yeah. Kill t yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And he does this um, little show. Where people just roast the fuck out of each other, yeah, like real, literally roast each other. Recently, Daniel Rollins was on. Bro, that shit was rough. And Daniel Rollins just fucking got in his feelings about shit. He walked off, yo. Yeah. Which, was, which was stupid because the the roast that they did was on Daniel was good. It was, the guy fucked up his words. Yeah, it was, he fumbled his words, yeah. but people understood what he was saying. Right. And so Daniel Rollins got his feelings hurt because he had a Dave Chappelle chain on him. He goes, <laughs> what kind of fucking grown man has another grown man's name on you? <laughs> like that he's still uh, alive too. What the fuck? Yeah, he should yeah, at least yeah. be dead first. Sure. You know. Yeah, but it's funny. that's what Tony Hinchcliffe <laughs> is known for. And he's kind of like a shock comic, curses yeah. a lot, says really crazy, disparaging shit. It's shock comedy, right? Yeah. He has some shit that goes with it. I've seen some of his stuff and it's made me laugh. Now, having said that, there was this clip on Twitter from another, from an Asian comic. I, I believe his name is Pang, Pang Dang or Dang Pang or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, Pang Dang comedy or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's a stand-up comic <laughs> and I think... I think he either, he either was the act before him or he was the one that was hosting the show mm -hmm. and he introduced Tony Hinchcliffe, right? Yeah. So he goes up and Tony Hinchcliffe literally out of nowhere just starts off with, you know, everybody give it up for this fucking chink. And <laughs> That's was, actually how Patrick comes in. Yeah. The shows too. <laughs> That's a, Whether uh, they're Asian or not. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter and yeah. everyone goes, ah. All right. yeah. Patrick, Patrick. Yeah, Comes out with crazy. the buck teeth, the rice yeah. hat. He's like, oh, hi, bro. Yeah. He does that. <laughs> Kills it every time. Dude, yeah. his character Standing is so good, dude. So accurate. His character, Juan Nick, so good, bro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you're in. <laughs> so, he was a character sense. based off me, actually. Yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah. it's pretty fucking terrible. Mouth open and everything. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> Tony Hinchcliffe goes on this, you know, he's he's basically going off and he starts doing like an Asian accent, like, oh, soy sauce, blah, 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 blah. There's an Asian accent, very offensive, whatever. Very so hacky. I, I saw this clip and I was looking at it. And one of the things that I always want to do now, because I've learned in social media, is that you can't look at clips mm -hmm. and then kind of judge it for what it is at that point. You have to see what it's really about. Mm -hmm. Now, for me, I want to say this because in case I get burned, let's talk about the stuff that I didn't like, Right. I don't like him using the word chink at all. That's like Asian equivalent for a lot of people. That's like N word with a hard R. Just don't do that shit. You know, move on from that stuff, right? Especially if you look like Tony Hinchcliffe. Because Tony Hinchcliffe looks like a racist no matter what. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. That's just what his profile looks he like. He got the right? teeth of a racist man. I, mean, <laughs> I know. Like, just He's just very... pristine racist, blue yeah, eyed, everything, yeah, Aryan bro. Brotherhood. So, <laughs> he has you know, no upper lip and shit, you know? Yeah. Like, there might be a few Asian people out there that has never been called this word chink, but just because I traveled around the United States so much now, I know that that word hurts people a lot. It's literally N-word with the hard R for a lot of people. Yeah. So 
when Asian people are going to hear a stand-up comic go off and just go, get this fucking chink off stage. And they don't know who Tony Hinchcliffe is, whether or not you know his comedy or not. It's just, don't use that word. That's like, a crazy way to start a show. Exactly. If you walked up and you said the N-word with the hard R, you wouldn't get a pass. You're not going to get a pass with the word chinky. And right? that's crazy. Yeah, that's the thing, right? Yeah. That's the thing. Now, that's, that's where I draw the line. Now, the way that Pang Dang Comedy kind of put up this clip he made it seem as if his whole set was him just going on a racial tirade against Asian people. But I was looking at this clip and it didn't seem like it was. So I went on Twitter and I asked a couple of people who said they were there, just kind of asked them like, hey, can you give me context about this? And this is what they said. They said that it's kind of taken out of context. And obviously they're, they're going to defend Tony because they're huge fans of him, right? I'm not defending his word of the usage of the word chink at all. I think that's fucking stupid. He could have been perfectly fine without that. Part. Build some rapport first. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they could be friends or something, comic <laughs> buddies or whatever. I don't fucking know. But it at doesn't the very seem like, least, you know? It doesn't seem like that's what it was because he tried to burn, he burned him on Twitter, right? Mm. So he goes up and then basically Tony Hinchcliffe's set was him irritated and making fun of the Asian guy because the Asian guy was using typical Asian tropes like you know asian accents the ping dang guy yeah mm. he was doing a lot of hacky asian mm. jokes he was being really hacky and then all the the crowd was kind of like laughing at it too and he could tell that they were doing it because of the white guilt type of thing so that's why he was doing the asian accent he wasn't doing an asian accent he was making fun asian. of him he was making, fun, he was of making fun of that dude for doing an asian accent yeah, yeah, so he was imitating sense. the comic see because when i saw that clip i was like this is a weird like it seemed like a smear campaign kind of right yeah like because the, the the like you said the hey chink part like get this chink out of here i was like all right but then the rest of it i just was so curious to see like why of all people this dude just went that crazy and just said all this random shit like yeah i just felt like there was more to the story because i because what i didn't really like to um with this asian comic right i don't know him personally so this dude, because we all know each other, but uh, <laughs> that's exactly what he was doing. So yeah, dude, I don't. He's doing that fan and shit. Yeah. yeah. Bing, bang, boom, bow, bow, bow. So I, I don't know this <laughs> the guy. The last thing we need in Asian comedy is just more <laughs> Asian accents, bro. Like, like, I don't know this guy personally, right? But one thing I didn't really appreciate that he did <clears> was <throat> the way that he posted it. Though he didn't say it exactly, mm -hmm. but he knew what he was doing. He had a very clear objective it was when he clipped. posted this. It was, mm -hmm. I'm going to put this clip <clears> up <throat> and make it seem like Tony Hinchcliffe is a racist guy that loves doing racist jokes against Asian people. Right. You didn't have to say it, but the way you posted it, you did that. And listen, you're upset because he roasted your ass. Yep. And people were laughing at you because you did a hacky set. In sure. his opinion, I don't know if it's everybody else's opinion. I'm just only talking about the context of what this clip is. Sure. You were upset because you got roasted by Tony Hinchcliffe <clears throat> and people laughed at you. So what you did, you took a very real problem in this country. You took that clip and you made something bigger than it was and that it actually was yep. you actually would have been perfectly fine if you said hey fuck tony hinchcliffe all that shit was cool but don't ever fucking call me a chink i will yeah. fuck you up you would have had so much more respect yeah all you had to say was that you didn't have to go ahead and make it seem like he was going on a racial tirade just right. because it's the popping thing right now yeah i don't fucking respect that shit at all nah. all you had to say was fuck you tony hinchcliffe don't you ever fucking call me because a chink. that takes away from the other shit Exactly. It takes away from the grandma it. getting fucking beat up in the streets. And then now people are going to be like, see, all you guys do is just cry, cry, cry. You angle. And yeah, you, yeah, you yeah, try yeah. to manipulate the narrative. Should have told them that shit in person. Yeah. And then like, you go know, up to him and be like, what's up, motherfucker? Yeah, bro. Like, I mean, that's that's the other thing. Why don't you too? just talk to him? Yeah, hey, bro, right. He's the there. Fuck, You're bro? at the show with him. Yeah, make fun of my set, whatever. Don't fucking call yeah, me a chink. Exactly. I'll slap the fucking taste exactly. out of you. Yeah. That's between you guys right there. Like, what's up? But that's that type of pussy shit I don't appreciate, right? Yeah. I've already said the part where I don't appreciate Tony Hinch. Listen, if I did a stand-up set and then Tony Hinchcliffe literally called me a chink in the middle of a set, I'd walk up and I snap that fool's fucking neck. Period. End of story. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Right? Because you can't. You could can make fun of my set. You could not like me, and then I'll grab the mic and I'll roast you back. But you can't call me a chink, and then all of a sudden I'm gonna go on Twitter and yeah, talk right. shit. That's no, I'm gonna say it to your shit. face. Yeah. Get the fuck off the stage. Don't call me a chink. I'll fuck your ass up. Yeah, you right. can take this outside. Right, right. But he did some very weak pussy shit. That's that some, some beta shit. shit. Yeah, yeah, it is. And also, like you said, what's what's really whack about it is that he's taking something serious and yeah. attaching this to it. Like it's not. It gets really his ego's hurt, mm -hmm. so he's gonna make it about this whole thing. To so he try wants to, to attach this thing to yeah, make this his point even thing bigger. that's actually really shitty that's going on in this country mm -hmm. to this guy to just focus all that anger on him. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It's just really weaselly. Yeah. It's weaselly behavior. That's the yeah. last thing we need in general from a media perspective is to just cherry pick. Yeah. 
That's the last thing we do. Also, you're a du- handle your shit, bro. You're a comic, don't, bro. Don't, handle don't your shit. No like, fucking, go up to him. Yeah. Go up to him. Be like, what's up? Like, you yeah. had a problem? Like, go talk to that motherfucker. He's right there. Yeah. Why do you have to go on the internet and, like, be a bitch? Like, and rat yeah. on. Like, Days later. That's what I hate shit. about Twitter and shit. It's like, everyone's all ratting. Like, you got an issue with him. Go fucking fuck his ass up or say yeah. something to him, dude. Like, like take him fuck? aside and be like, hey, bro, fuck you. Why the fuck are you shitting on my shit? Comedy is one of those worlds, too, where, like, you kind of can still crack somebody, I feel like, and you, you'd you be all right. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, depending on who you crack. It's like, yeah, he was being but dick like, you know there, like, there's a, hey joe rogan yeah. i loved your set <laughs> and you walk away oh but, yeah my hack yeah, but yeah. joe rogan wouldn't call you a chink yeah exactly <laughs> joe rogan wouldn't do that yeah you know he's a little smarter about his shit yeah because it was like tony hitchcock goes hard though i mean yeah. that's his thing he does go hard i, I so. remember i remember watching that clip today because i was with, i was training with jason chen this morning and we showed the clip and we were both talking about it and i was like something just feels off like something doesn't seem like I feel like there's more to the story. And then like, Jason Chen was like, how much Bitcoin has he invested? Yeah. <laughs> this fucking dweeb. <laughs> fucking dweeb, Jason. What's his Roth IRA, actually? Yeah. Uh, no, but like I remember thinking, hearing that, and I, like, <laughs> like similar, to, similar to what you were saying, I was like, yo, like, the chick stuff is crazy. Like, that's that's a crazy way just to start off anything. You know yeah. what I mean? And, and then I saw the second part, and I was like, this is weird. Like, I just wouldn't expect... Because I've seen Tony Hinchcliffe stand up, like I've seen him do comedy, and I just wasn't expecting to go like, like this crazy. Well, so con- just, context is everything. Exactly, bro. that's the that's, thing that's missing in a lot of things in today's world is context. We need context to everything. Yeah, right, everything yeah. we do, we need context because at this point, there's the way people manipulate, and like just like you said, like the beta shit, like that is so that is some beta, that's some shit. pussy shit, bro. Like I just wish he would have handled it himself yeah you know just handle it and like i said i'm an asian dude i'm also a comic and i want this dude paying i'm gonna support him right but i would support him by saying bro don't let that fool fucking walk all over you handle your shit don't yeah. fucking do that shit on twitter talk to him face to face and check right. his ass yeah. if it's that big of a problem yeah right? right so this is me saying in support of him i'm not trashing paying right now i'm saying you could have done that way better and i just don't like it when you make it seem as if it was a racial type, because right now people are into something. This is what they call it now. They call it fucking trauma porn. People love this shit right yeah. now. They do. This is this is what it yeah, is. Like for sure. they're making films about trauma shit that we see on real life news every yep. day. I don't need to see you make a film about something fake that's not real about shit that's already happened in real life. Yeah. Because they know it's gonna get views. Yeah. They know the reaction, and so people are addicted to trauma porn. So he exploited that. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure you weren't really thinking about this when you did post this you know, to the Asian comic. Sure. But you were just thinking about revenge. But there's a ripple effect that happens when you do stuff like this. Yeah. There's a negative effect. Because number one, there's already this narrative that Asian men are fucking weak. This doesn't help us. Yeah. It doesn't help that you fucking cried on Twitter and everybody else like, fuck yeah, I can't believe this, this, guy, this guy's a racist fuck. Well, the people who know the context of this, they also agree that the word chink was fucking... Uh, unacceptable. Yeah. But you didn't have to twist it and say that he went on a racial tirade about Asian people. He made fun of you. It yeah, right. it. exactly. Yeah, and you got your feelings yeah. hurt. That's right. all that it is. The chink stuff, you can go talk about that all day. I got your back 100%. But now I have a problem with this because now you're just kind of using this movement just so you could gain support. Yeah, and that's that's so whack, bro. I don't that's like so that, whack. man. It bothers me, dude. Because yeah, it's whack. Like it's whack. And you're it's, a comic. Handle your shit, yeah, dude. Right? Just handle your shit. Yeah. yeah. Handle like, your especially shit. Especially with all the shit that's going on. The last thing people need is another diluted story just to kind of piggyback off this crazy shit that's been happening. You know, yeah. like that's the worst thing you could do, man. And you're right, like, the, there's it, a lot of just takes it away it just takes away from the yeah the real shit you know there's a lot of beta shit going on bro yeah there's this like it's so much easier it's ass, easier to do that shit but like it's like kind of like like even like you hear terms like toxic masculinity like there's just all this beta ass bitch ass shit going on let me give and you it's a, like not being it's not being called for what it is yeah. bitch ass shit <laughs> yeah. you know Yo, like <laughs> let me give you this fucking dope i can't i mean it's probably gonna take me forever to find it let me give you this example oh, fucking hilarious right yeah. there is a clip of tony hinchcliffe getting roasted by this dude in a wheelchair <laughs> and it was at the kill tony show right mm-hmm. and so they're roasting each other this is how i wish this asian dude would have handled it right so tony hinchcliffe this dude is like a paraplegic uh-huh. so he has like a mic right here and he's fucking you know paraplegic <laughs> as shit he can't really use his hand he's <clears> definitely <throat> in a wheelchair and this is you know another comic has a fucked up haircut and tony hinchcliffe goes are you the guy that gave this dude a haircut 
fucking funny. People start laughing, right? Yeah, yeah. Right? And he goes, speaking of shit, that cut, what happened to your Netflix special? Oh. <laughs> and that's what the fucking wheelchair to everybody's dying laughing, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he, st- he starts fucking clowning. He goes, well, at the end of the day, at least I could get up and walk out of my chair. <laughs> so Tony Hinchcliffe is roasting this full yeah, about of him course. being a paraplegic. Bro, this dude in the wheelchair looks at Tony Hinchcliffe. He goes, he goes, speaking of special needs, there's also another special that nobody needs. <laughs> Hey, that's that good, bro. Dark. That's bars. Roasting the fuck out of Tony. He that's won. a play on words. <laughs> yeah. He goes, thinking about special needs. There's also another special that nobody needs, and it's your stand-up special. <laughs> bro. Wow, that, bro. That is Hard. how you handle yeah, especially you're just going as a back comedian. You know yeah. I mean? yeah. And you know yeah. what? He said some fucking over-the-line shit. He talked about this dude's fucking dire situation being a paraplegic. They're going hard. And yeah. he came at him with something 10 times better. And he was ready. Exactly. He was ready. That's how you should have handled it. Right. And you know what? Tony probably still would have been burned and you would have came off funnier. But the only thing you did was say, oh, look at this racist shit. Uh, happy uh, Asian Pride Month. It's like, come on, bro. Enough of this. And honestly, dude, if the guy said was kind of hacky like that, he's actually kind of like he's shitting on you. But that's kind of. Uh, so good if you learn the, it's kind of good for you in the sense where if you, if you really if you can get put your ego aside and be like damn is my shit really hacky and if it is it's gonna make you buy, write better shit yeah you know if it if it objectively was hacky I don't yeah. know I didn't hear it set but if it was that and it's like yeah that that's not that's not what you, we don't need like I mean I don't know how many years he's been doing or whatever but everyone starts off shitty in comedy yet and you know you gotta like get through some shit but like if it really was hacky it's kind of gonna help you yeah and I thought at the end of the video clip he was gonna like grab the mic and just start roasting Tony Hinchcliffe or something but it yeah. was just it just cut with that and I'm like so not only did you cut his set you didn't get to see the whole thing you didn't give us context about it and you just walked away with that on Twitter what the fuck man yeah like you're not doing any yeah. of us a favor, especially is, as that Asian wasn't Americans. the way to handle it. Is yeah, there a full all. clip up? No, I got to go find it. I just know that that's the short clip that everybody keeps showing, and I, you know, I'm all my my buddies too are like, well, fuck Tony Hinchcliffe, he's not funny. Is this what you call comedy? It's like, guys, you guys are also adults. Take a step back. You're over here going to the peanut gallery, clapping about bullshit. You're cheering on this dude, which I don't think we should cheer him on because he didn't handle anything. He went on Twitter and he told mommy. Yeah, exactly. I hate shit like that. Me too. I fucking hate it, Especially man. in that Me world, too. right? Especially because you're a comic. Right. Yeah. You have the ability to destroy Tony Hinchcliffe. You have that power yeah. with your words. Right. Because because Tony Hinchcliffe's, that little intro joke was hacky as fuck. It was easy pickings for you. Right? He could have gone up yeah, yeah. after he could have, Yeah, gone, gone back at him for yeah. sure. Made some jokes about it at least. I don't fucking know. Do something. Yeah. Or talk to him as a man afterwards the show. Pull him aside and be like, yo, what the fuck is up with your problem, bro? Yeah, slap him up a little or bit. Or some, do something. Yeah. Do so, Like, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Didn't have to be violent. It could just been with words. Nah, it could have just been like, <laughs> it could have been like, yo, that was fu-. I mean, even if he it wasn't like the aggressive type, been like, yo, what the fuck is your problem, bro? That's yeah. fucked up. Exactly. Like, blah, blah, blah. And just hear what he, and who knows what Tony would have said. He might have been like, I just thought your shit was hacky and yeah. I didn't really mean it, but like, I was trying to shit on you. Uh, who knows how that conversation yeah. would have played out? And but it's like, cool, bro. Just yeah, it's don't. just handle it amongst, you know, just people just don't want, no one handles their shit anymore. You know he, what he I mean? He did it it's the like, most, he did it the most stereotypical Asian way. He did the Yelp review, right? Uh, Instead of coming up to the fucking business owner and yeah. being like, hey, uh, my drink was great. Can I get a new one? You went away. You gave them a one star, said the drink was terrible and didn't allow them to fix the problem. I don't think that's only, I mean, a lot of people do that, bro. In today's world, unfortunately, like I think I don't know what the fuck's going I on. I call it the fucking Asian boba girl problem. That's what they do. <laughs> Asian they, boba girl. They walk away. They go. They they fucking somebody comes up to them and they go, hey, "How was your drink? How was the service? It was great." They walk away, give them a one star. Yeah. Instead of saying, "Yeah, the drink wasn't that great." Hey, how can I fix this for you? Sure. Right. That's what. That's yeah. that's what. Give them a shot. Done. Give them a shot at first, or at least fucking tear them down face to face. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I'm that is so- some whack ass shit, though. I mean, that's definitely not the way to go about it. Because it's just easier to do it that way. Yeah, that's that's what a lot of it is. It's just accessibility. Now yeah. everyone has a voice. Everybody has, uh, if, if something gets a hit, you know, yeah, it, it becomes time, especially immediate. like in the context of comedy. Like comedy clubs are, are, you know how they are. Yeah, they're crazy. Dude. It's raw. You're it, you're Say entering a crazy world. You're entering the world of not non censorship, wild, push the boundaries. It, this is that arena for that place. You know what I mean? So. I mean, yeah, some kind of, sometimes these guys fuck up and go too far or whatever, but that's the whole point is like you're trying to figure it out, you know, yeah. like you got to experiment whatnot, but like to take that context without saying anything that he did and then putting out there, like you said, attaching it to this thing that's very serious. 
That's pretty fucking weird. I just hate that shit, dude. Yeah. I, I don't like it. I don't like what you're doing. Like, we got enough problems, right? And then we got to deal with your little fake little bullshit, dude. Like, it's, 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 you're, the problem was the word chink. It wasn't the other whole thing. Yeah. You could have just dealt with it like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But that's why Dave Chappelle's opening up his own comedy club and he's making a seat of 120 people only. Yeah, that's and he's dope. A, and he's, and the objective of his comedy club, from what he said, is that I want people to work their shit out here. You could say whatever you want. It might not be the best shit, but just put out your ideas. Yeah. And the crowd that's going to come here is also going to be, it's also going to know that the material that you put out is not going to be refined. This is what this are this is kind of what I liked about the comedy safe clubs. space. That's it's, what the comedy is supposed to be. Yeah. I mean, ideally, like that's that's how you get to the Richard Pryors. That's how you get to the dude. I, I remember I saw a joke. Uh, I don't know if I was watching a documentary on the comedy. I don't know where it was, but it's Richard Pryor. He's on stage and he's like talking about his his daughter was like sixteen or seventeen at the time, and she had brought in some friends over, and he's talking about how fine these girls are. Mm -hmm. Like they're six, they're underage. It's yeah. like he's made it clear. He's like they're underage girls. He's like, man, they were fuck, and he starts going into this whole thing about like how fine these <laughs> underage girls are, yeah. and you can feel like the audience kind of getting Pull uncomfortable, back. like holy shit, like what? They're kind of laughing, but it's like, ah, oh, what? Yeah, where what are fuck? we? Go yeah. Where are we going? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he's like, he's like, thank God that they opened their mouth, they could talk, because he starts talking about how stupid they were, right? And then he like flips it, like okay, he brings you back, like. Like I had these dirty thoughts, but they were so fucking stupid it turned me off. Blah blah blah. Yeah. But that he had to work on that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like at some point it was just like I think these underage girls are fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like what the fuck did yeah. you just say? So that's somewhere in some room that was said, and it was like, oh, like dude, this guy's a fucking weirdo. But yeah. it, but it became this. But that's that's like. You know, it's just like I don't understand why sometimes people come to stand up comedy shows. I don't know who set the standard now to where even stand up rooms are have changed where the standard is, well, you can only say stuff that never offends me. When has this happened? Right. Like I said, I'm not making the attachment to the chink word. Right. Yeah. I right, have to keep right. saying that in case people get on my fucking back. No, we're just talking shit. about comedy. We're now. talking about comedy in general. Right. What the fuck happened? I, I don't understand. Maybe you were you were bringing up the example of fucking Dat Fan and Patrice O'Neill. Bro, that's so brutal. <laughs> Have you seen that? I never saw yeah, that. I see that. Dude, I'm gonna show that. it to you. I'll probably I'll show it to you after this. But dude, he fucking him and Rich Voss. Tough Crowd was you've seen Tough Crowd, right? Yeah. So it was it was and Patrice it was like the, the Bill Burr, uh, Kevin Hart, like all these guys are just would talk shit, yeah. dude. Like like break your soul level type shit talking. And Dat Fan's on there and he's kind of doing his shtick, you know? And Patrice O'Neill was anti, especially on that show, doing a shtick. Like, he just went up there with his feelings and kind of just yeah. riffed and did what he did. So, Dat Fan kept doing the voice, right? For everything, like everything. And he starts just shitting on him like, oh, like, like at some point, because they would, Colin Quinn would talk about topics. He's like, so he talked about the Iraq war. And then Patrice O'Neill looks at Dat Fan. He's like, what does your hack Vietnamese mom think about the Iraq war? Like, he just like is... Dope, damn, like hard, yeah. like where it's like he literally has nothing to say, bro. He didn't say anything that. that shit. Well, he tr he kind of just he, he literally like they're hitting him so hard, bro. He, he literally had nothing. He just kind of laughs uncomfortably, like he got fucked up, <laughs> like where it was like, damn, like just like pump the brakes a little bit. But they were just, they had him on the ropes and they were just. I mean, if people are going on. at him that hard, I mean, they, I'm pretty sure Dad Fan could have said something back just as worse. I wonder why he never did. Well, I mean, he, he, I well, don't he know. Knows, but, I probably. mean, he's going, but Patrice O'Neill was like the king of like, I mean, he, I, he could have tried, I guess, but he did. He was just, it was because also, too, it was so spot on how they were shitting on him. Because people he, know about it. He, and yeah. he knew, like, it's kind of like when you shit on somebody and you hit them with some true shit where it's like, you can't really, like, they're really, it's bro. real. It's real. It's yeah. like, ah, fuck. Like, what? Is... They got hit with the KO. Yeah, he got hit like, with, like, a fat <laughs> They're trying to figure it out. Like, yeah, what yeah, the fuck yeah. Do yeah I he got do? rocked. He got rocked. Yeah. It was just like, the he probably wasn't one. expecting it either. Nah. Yeah, I don't and think especially he was. Especially from a guy like Patrice, bro. Like, that dude is so big. And then Rich Voss starts jumping into, which, and now you got two dudes coming after you hard. Yeah. And then, and the whole crowd, like, it was just a nightmare, bro. I wonder before it was a nightmare. That fan stepped in, if those comics felt that he was undeserving to be in that. Circle. I think that's part probably. of it too. And he, like, and he, they're all East Coast guys, right? Yeah. And that fan's probably a West Coast guy. Dude, too. East Coast dudes are rough, man. And they're, it's a different vibe, bro. Like that's, the way they talk shit is so different. Well, think about how like raw Bill Patrice O'Neill was, and then you got this guy that came off this like last the Audi, the show, yeah. you know, the and first you're like, season. Who the fuck is the very this guy? First and you know, Patrice is probably like, I'm way funnier than this fucking guy. Yeah. Who this guy? Like, fuck. And he probably. Was like I'm gonna make an example. Of and it. on top of that, like Def and he blew up, but then that was it. 
Well, here's the thing. When he did the last comic standing, he was in the very first season. I actually remember that fan from that show. Yeah. And I wanted to be on the last comic standing. I remember watching it. I remember when yeah. I was a kid, bro, I was like, yo, this dude's funny as fuck. Yeah. I thought so he was, was funny also, too. Yeah. He when was I doing, watched it, I thought he was funny. You know, he was doing at the, that time. Well, because yeah, was, the difference yeah, kid, between yeah, him so. and everybody else, when he was do, when Dat Fan was doing the Asian accent, he was doing a Vietnamese accent, which was his mom. Mm. Albeit, his Vietnamese accent isn't that great, even for a Vietnamese dude. It kind of sucks. Mm. Um, and when we were listening to it, I'm like, okay, cool. Here's the thing about those accents, though. You got to move on from it. Yeah, yeah exactly. What's, what's your next set? Yeah. And, you know, he was kind of making fun of fucking uh, uh, white people and how they would relate to, to Asian people with food. He was one of those first people that did that joke. Yeah. And it was a really good set, actually. He had a good tight 10. Yeah, you know? it was dope. And then he never evolved from it. And he kept going back to the Vietnamese mom accent. And it was always a variation of it. Yeah. It There's was... no doubt that he was like a good comic. Like, yeah. you don't get to do what he does yeah. without being good at stand-up comedy. There's no doubt about that. He had a that. presence. Like, he was but, funny. But yeah. you're right. Like, at a certain point, it's like, you must evolve. It's like the same thing. Even like, like uh, Def Jam comedy back in the day, right? Like, that shit was hilarious. But a lot of it was like white people do this, black people do this. Yep. Yeah. Now, if you're a black comic and you're doing white people do this, people black people, it's out. like it's just it's just yeah. it's been done. Yeah. You know, like oh, what's going on now? Like bring up you got to bring a new twist. Yeah, it's just it's just I think that's just with him. He did it, and then like you said, it was like okay, now what's ne what else yeah. is going? That's on? what a lot of people felt about like. Um, People who aren't Filipino feel sometimes this way about Joe Coy. Yeah. Because Joe Coy always does, imitates his mom, does yeah. a Filipino accent, imitates his mom, does a Filipino accent. It's fucking funny. It is funny. Right? But after I see it in his fifth special, I'm done. Yeah. You know? But I think Filipino people, they relate to it so much, they get it. So he has his niche crowd. But people who are outside of that, they're kind of tired of it. You yeah. Know, they, they look at it. And I, Joe Coy is fucking funny. I fuck with Joe this Coy guy. Is yeah. funny. That's fucking hilarious. You know? It is funny. I'm just saying that for me as somebody who's not Filipino, when I saw his, his new special, I was like, I've heard these jokes though. You know, like, yeah, right. I've, exactly. I've, I've kind of moved on, mm. and then Dat Fam didn't even just evolve the the Vietnamese mom joke, right? Like I could do a Korean accent, I'll do it in my stand up all the time because I'm literally talking like my parents. But that's not the crux of the joke. Isn't the accent? The accent isn't the funny part. It's yeah. the character that's being sure. portrayed. Exactly. So he doesn't do that. He goes, crowd's not laughing. Hello. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. Like, mm, come on, guy. Exactly. Do exactly. better than that, man. Right. Bobby Lee fucking hates this dude. Yeah. Yeah. I Why? That. Shits on him on the podcast Why? all the time. I think they actually got into like a fist fight or something. Oh, really? Because they're, yeah. they're both like San Diego guys. And he goes, he wasn't living on her desk. I remember, I, that's the only thing I remember. Because mm -hmm. I remember in the uh, last comic standing in like the uh, the hype up video of that fan, he was like, he, he wakes up under a desk or some shit. And he's like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm like, I'm really poor. You know, I just do comedy as a passion, yada, yada, yada. And I remember Bobby on this podcast was like, yo, this motherfucker wasn't. He wasn't living in her desk, bro. This guy's full of shit. And he just was talking about how, like, he just didn't think he was funny and stuff like that and how hacky he was. And yeah. Especially as another Asian comic who's like, I'm, I've never seen Bobby Lee's actual stand up, but from what I hear, it's not like all Asian jokes and all no. Asian accents, right? It's like pretty, it's pretty wild, I hear. Yeah. But also, too, it's like, I would everybody, imagine how you have a little resentment towards this dude. And I don't know how like Asian comic support works, right? Like who really yeah. fucks with who? I'm just, I'm just, I think for me, I'm tired of identity shit. Yeah. Um, I fuck with people trying to find who they are or whatever, whatnot. But now everything has become specifically in this country, in the United States of America, other countries laugh at us because they're like, why the fuck do you talk about race so much in your country? Yeah. That's something that people in the UK clown about Americans. They, they're like, you guys always talk about your race so much. It's yeah. like, where, where are you from? They go, I'm, I'm a Londoner. Um, they don't go, I'm a black Londoner. Yeah. You know, I'm a fucking white Londoner. I'm an Asian Londoner. I'm an Indian Londoner. No, they go, mm. I'm from London. I'm from Britain. I'm from, I'm from this part or whatever. Yeah. yeah. We're very, very much race obsessed here. I understand it's because of the history, you know, mm -hmm. but sometimes for me, it gets a little exhausting. Too much. Yeah, it is. I just... Every time I talk to an Asian person now, they go, Oh, so how do you feel about your identity? It's like, it's like get the oh fuck That's God, crazy. Bro. How, who the fuck are you? What's what your name? What's your hobbies, what, bitch? What kind of question is that? Yeah. 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 What the fuck is because this, dude? You're a always, Nat Geo fucking Yeah, because you always, yeah. they always <laughs> have to remind you that you're Asian. Yeah. And and it's just, like, that's fine. Let's just be individuals, dude. Exactly. Yeah. Who the fuck are you? Exactly, exactly. What here's are you my, about? Yeah, here's my biggest thing, too. Yeah. Yeah. Look at my fucking gooky face. I you you know I'm Asian, yeah. right? I don't and, need to. And also, everyone knows I'm Asian. Yeah. That's what's so annoying too about the identity thing is like, cause it's like some people are look. 
you could be a piece of shit in any color. You could be cool any color. You know what I mean? But I want to start identifying the dudes that are pieces of shit for yeah. being pieces of Let's shit do and that the dudes first. that are cool. Let's do yeah. that you know what I mean? Like, fuck, like all this bullshit. Like, it's so annoying. I think it's really dope that people are, you know, that you can are being proud of who they are, right? Yes, yeah. there's so, nothing wrong with that. But you don't have to make it a topic of your it. conversation. <laughs> you can literally just be proud of who you are and just be proud of who you are and represent that by just being you. Yeah, yeah. just be you, motherfucker. You know? Yeah. That's the important part. <laughs> because your culture Please. will always be a part of that. Yeah, yeah exactly. It'll always be a part of it's that. It's in you. It's part of your story. It's part yeah. of who you grew up, you know? Yes. And, but a lot, yeah, dude. It's It'll just, come out. It comes It's exhausting. Out. It is exhausting. And then it's exhausting when people shit on you for not speaking up too much about it, right? Yeah. They go, why are you not talking about it? Shut the fuck up. Yeah. I'm living, bro. Yeah, worry about you, yeah. dickhead. Do what you want to do. I'm going to do what I'm going to yeah. do. I'll, you know, if you want to talk about a certain topic. You know, some people I'll talk about it. Yeah. If you don't want to talk about it, you don't have to talk about Dude, it. Dude, so many people were shitting on Annoying. other influencers because they weren't talking about social justice shit. Right. <sighs> and I got so fucking irritated. And there was this kid that I was talking to on Instagram live and he goes, well, what do you feel about other Asian Americans who aren't speaking up like you are? And I think he thought I was going to be on his side. Right. And I basically said, why the fuck is it your business? Yeah. Right. But do you know these people personally? Yeah. Right. They might be dealing with anxiety. They might be some of the dumbest motherfuckers you ever met in your life. Yeah. I, you, there's a very odd belief that people believe saying something is better than saying nothing. And that saying is false. Nah. People who don't know shit and are dumb as fuck should say nothing and keep their mouth fucking shut. <laughs> yeah. yeah. People yeah. who are smart maybe should say something who can public, publicly speak to a crowd very well. Yeah. Yeah. Those people should say something, right? For you to, let me tell you something, man. Some of the oh, biggest shit, lames I've ever met in my life are fucking celebrities lames like fucking losers dude just because you're famous doesn't mean that you know how to speak well it doesn't mean you're interesting yeah it, you're a fucking lame you yeah you just that. have a fucking celebrity role you uh you you acted in some fucking movie doesn't mean you're an interesting person yeah doesn't mean that you have smart thoughts so why the fuck do you want these celebrities to go ahead and speak up about shit that is something so complicated and convoluted as politics race and fucking um tragedy that happens in all around the world also to add to that when i see celebrities talk about serious issues like that it actually it makes me go fuck that guy and yeah. fuck whatever they're talking because it's like they're so out of like for a lot you of them it's a like yacht, bro. they seem like yeah, yeah you're <laughs> you, gotta tell a you, jet, you know dog. what's going on you're gonna tell me how to live my life to save the fucking the ocean and shit and like, save the planet go fuck yourself like that dog. apologize video when that was happening remember the black and white with jesse pinkman was in it and shit and it's I like and he's just i like, apologize for every wow. time I let a joke go by and I didn't fucking say it. It's like, get the fuck <laughs> out of here, like, bro. What? You guys are all jerking each other off. Shut your punk ass up, dude. The, the yeah, weirdo. Jesse Pinkman, okay? I apologize. Oh, fuck the prayer hands, hey, what man. What the fuck, The bro? biggest bro, you say statement that celebrities ever made, and by the way, I love this woman to death because she's fine as fuck. Bold she's dope as hell. Say, Israeli bold. soldier, dude. Gal Gadot. And when they all Israeli say... Israeli soldier. <laughs> I was like, who that? I, I was like, like, who that? Who she was fucking? in the military. I know, I know. But yeah. I thought her name I, was, that was Israeli soldier. I was like, like who's that? Uh, <laughs> she was like, she a rapper? <laughs> I was like, I think, dope is it, name. Is it Israel? She was a really soldier. Yeah, Israeli soldier. Yeah. Yeah. She gathered all of her celebrity friends and said, hey, the world is burning and suffering. Oh, they so what I'm going to do is sing Imagine All the People by the Beatles and we're gonna make you feel better. One of the stupidest fucking things I've ever seen in my life. We should do it now. Yeah. Imagine all the people. <laughs> yeah. Watch them burn. I don't, even, I don't even know the rest of the song. That's, That's it. All That's I know. all I know. That's all I know. Too, and I was so shocked that they all thought that that was a good idea. When people are going through real shit, you thought that your fucking celebrity ass who makes millions of dollars singing was gonna make them feel better. And at least 20 of them thought it was a good idea. Yeah. Because they were all enthusiastic and they were all and look that These just shows are out of touch as shit. Bro. That's what I mean. Like that, like it just shows how fucking not with regular people you. Are. That's what was so know? good about Ricky Gervais hosting the. Oh, so, so good, bro. He's, He's like, goaded, no bro. one gives a fuck what you guys have to say. Come get your stupid little award. It <laughs> doesn't matter. Get the here. fuck out of stage, <laughs> bro. So good. And he everybody would, needed that. Everybody you needed have a platform. That. You have power to change the world. Yeah, dude. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Bro. Nobody cares. I think it it actually hurts whatever cause they're talking about. Yeah. For the most part, dude. Let me I really do. I think most people look at that and go, fuck these people. I've, I've got messages from about. people, right? Yeah. Saying like, hey, we're going to have this conference and we're going to talk about, you know, 
the the problem with Asian hate and it's it's for like these big big execs. Can you come through and talk about this? Like, and I literally <sighs> wrote back. I go, do you know what I do for a living? <laughs> I was like, do you have any idea what I do for a living? I am not that person. I don't know numbers. I don't know stats. I speak feelings and I make jokes and I tell people to shut the fuck up. Mm -hmm. I was like, you should contact people who are real. There are people who are in uh, Congress. There are people who are in political state. Like they know these things. Yeah, they can right. help. They should speak about the stuff. You are asking me. I posted a picture on Mother's Day of myself half naked on a bed. <laughs> Great picture, though. That was good. <laughs> like, yeah. This is who you want to speak to important people? Are you out of your fucking mind? Yeah, yeah. This is what I'm talking about. Even me, I am not that point person. Mm -hmm. I'm only going to speak in the way that I feel that is correct. That's about it. Yeah. But you shouldn't have me be there in a place of importance when there are people who are smart individuals who know what the fuck they're talking about. Give them the platform, yeah. not me. That goes for me, too. You know, And I don't understand why you're asking me. Like, because I got a, like a fucking few hundred thousand views on Instagram. That's whatever. Yeah. There's other people who don't get that, that are smarter than me and they know more. Go, yeah. Go get them. Right. Fucking Andrew Yang. Get Andrew Yang. Yeah, Andrew Yang. Yeah. He's just going to bring He's up UBI all the time. Like, fuck, bro. We get it. <laughs> Shit. Give us a thousand dollars every month. Like, wow. Uh, please. Yeah, give us Jesus. the fucking universal fucking help. The they, did them, they took that motherfucker's idea for COVID, though, hard. They yeah. did. They and, took his idea and, and this implemented dude was the like, shit out of it. The fuck did I just say? Dude? Yeah, yeah. And now you guys are just using my idea like it wasn't my shit. Yeah. That shit came in handy. The disrespect, dude. Yeah, these motherfuckers, bro. That's so crazy. You should go on those conferences, though, and just say wild shit. I, just, just see what the fuck would happen, yo. Yeah. What was just, that Coca-Cola don't be white shit? Remember yeah, don't that? be don't be so white or something. Don't shit? be white. Don't the be evil. Exactly. It was like, don't be evil, don't be white. <laughs> yeah, and you're like, shit. that's actually good as <laughs> Fucking Kendall Jenner with the uh, Pepsi can. Yeah. yeah dog. See, Caitlyn Jenner running for oh, office. Hey, hey, my, did you see her ad campaign? Are you for real? It's just hey, her. And she her, just, and her shit, low-key kind of fire bro yeah like her ad campaign was like hey we're bringing but california Ka back Ka she's Ka on the she, she, she she wants to be governor running for governor Yo, she took the shots. ad campaign she's on the beach she's like on the pier santa monica pier it's like dun, dun, dun. it's got epic music a fucking a knife Foom, cuts dick off throws it in the ocean <laughs> dolphin jumps i'm gonna all eat it dude got my Wait, vote hey <laughs> Hey, are you lying to no, me? No, of now? course he's lying. You son of a bitch. I was like, the United States of America. <laughs> <laughs> this dick, bro, you legit got mad. I was like, dude, if that's the case, he got my, no, she got my vote. The real video though, fire. What she's is taking the real shots video? at Newsom. She's taking shots on how he handled the homelessness problem. She's taking shots at Nancy Pelosi. She's bro. taking t shots at she's transgender girl in sports too. She's in taking shots video? at them. I, I didn't don't see the whole video. video. I'm the, talking the, shit. I don't know. The what first I'm like five minutes, like the first like two minutes of the video, <laughs> it was shot beautifully. You know what I mean? I was on a Sony A6600. You know what I mean? With a 20 millimeter lens, it was lit, boy. And and uh, and uh, no zoom and shit. A manual focus. It was wild. But the whole time, like you're watching this and you're seeing how she's taking shots and all those people that we fucking can't stand, and you're like low key. I kind of get it, but I only watched the first like minute and a half. Dog, how long is the fucking video? It was like twenty-two minutes. <laughs> God, that's, that's when wrong. she cut the dick off at the it's end. It's a full episode. Dude. Dolphin yeah, yeah, eats yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I Feeding literally pictured fish. fucking Caitlyn Jenner just standing up there, chopping her dick off, <laughs> blood splurting, throws it in a dolphin eating it, bro. <laughs> and I legit <laughs> and just fucking saluting everybody with that bloody ass hand. Yeah, just okay. <laughs> so I cut off my dick. I'm kind. Hey, and did she, did she really not support <laughs> trans people? No. What? So she made a statement. That she doesn't think she don't like gay marriage, right? So she's a, she's a, not into gay marriage because she's a traditional woman, bro. And oh, wait, wait, too. Oh, I'm there sorry, was, what? There was a statement too. She's a traditional ass woman. There's a statement too that she said that trans uh, girls, so boys that transition to girls should not be allowed to play in girls' sports. Boys that transition into girls how about, should not be allowed to play boy sports. Girl sports. How about we talk about how she kills somebody? Which, on PCH? which, which? <laughs> Okay, <laughs> and then she got away with she shit. She did like, kill somebody, so I killed somebody. What okay. happened to that? I want to know what happened. Nothing. Money happened. Just I don't know why yeah. she always does that. She goes, okay. It's she, been a while since I've seen you. Okay. Like, when did you pick that up? She's Mr. Garrison, bro. Yeah, yeah, for real. Okay. She saw, she saw fucking South Park and was like, I'm gonna just lean into this. And she didn't even know that they're fucking based off her and shit. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so but yeah, she, but she wait. Hold, hold on. Let's back this up for a second. There's this, a lot going on. So this this woman who is trans, right? Trans doesn't believe in gay marriage. Thinks that gay marriage is not is an a abomination thing because that's crazy. because she's a traditional woman who she's a woman that's into women. So technically she's a lesbian. So she doesn't even believe in her own relationship. What, what the fuck 
is going on right yeah, now? It's called she's being, a traditional called, woman that's a lesbian. Wait, but, wait. Yeah, she's anti-gay marriage, but she's a woman who likes still likes women. So that makes her a lesbian. So she's not even into her own shit. It's called being insane. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. I'm like trying, I'm trying to pick the pieces to create this puzzle yeah. and this tapestry, and none of the fucking puzzle is fitting into each other. Also said that trans, so boys that transition to girls should not be able to play sports, girls sports, which controversial issue. If you say that as a, as like if one of us said that, we're considered transphobic, like you are a piece of shit. Oh, really? How could you ever say, yeah, if, because because it should be like, there's this thing now where it's like, if you're a boy transitioned to a girl, we're supposed to say like, that's definitely a girl. So he should be able to wrestle with girls or he should be able to play soccer with girls or or weightlift with girls. Well, and you say that obviously, after he fucks up your daughter. Yeah, exactly. That's that's what I'm or saying. Or she fucks up your daughter. But even see that, even saying that is like transphobic. That's why when he when she said it or Caitlyn Jenner said it, I was laughing because I was like, what are, what are they gonna do now? Yeah. It's like the queen, the person that started this whole shit with the Vogue fucking uh, I, magazine as cover. I, a transgender woman, hate fags. So, <laughs> <laughs> and then the chops off her dick, throws it in the ocean, and then a fucking dolphin eats it. Oh, say, say can you, you say, say well, I, 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 well, I feel like the whole trans community didn't really fuck with her at the beginning. Like, they kind of resented mean? her. They kind of resented her at or, the beginning because, maybe, yeah, because she had such a, like, privilege going into it and she didn't really get, like, the real maybe, trans experience, may, too. Maybe the real trans community did, but she was so celebrated by yeah. everyone. I Probably that wasn't trans, yeah. honestly. Was You're probably Kardashian right, though. Man. Probably the real motherfuckers were like, we have to yeah. invite somebody who is transsexual to talk about we these have topics. To I don't. I don't think I personally know anybody who's trans. Well, I don't well, know anybody. Yeah, well, yeah. I know somebody, and they fucking don't fuck with this fool. <laughs> they hate right. this fool. You know what I mean? Well, like, I mean, it was very weird too, and I'm not sure if other people agree with this, and this might be insensitive. But when she won Woman of the Year award, that's I was crazy. Like, Dude, who she, who gives you a Woman of the Year? And first of all, you have been a woman a year or two. There are so many other, who've been a woman their whole fucking yeah. life I saw, that I could think of that probably deserves that award for sure more than you. I saw a funny joke. It was like it took a man to, like. <laughs> a year. A year. Hey, say no more, dog. Say no more. Say it with your chest. <laughs> say it with your chest. Damn, That's what a fucking like come that. up, huh? Fucking kill somebody on PCH. The guy's is a fucking Olympic. Uh, this woman is a fucking Olympic athlete. Yeah, and Olympic then athlete. She becomes Smanging a woman. out fucking. Hate Kim Kardashian's mom. Anti-gay, right? but Anti is a lesbo. Yo, that's so crazy. What that is a lesbo. The, yeah. What in the hell is going that's on? That's hard to track, huh? Like, if you were to put all her, like... That whole family is fucked up, they're, huh? they're That's what I'm saying. It's like, that's a, that family's a disease, bro. Yeah. They're like a attention disease, like a virus, bro. Like, you guys Shit, are gross. Hey, people buying in, though, bro. Yeah, they, they buy in, buy but in. that shit's fucking... It's cause crazy. Because it's, it's like, it's just the cheap baseline thing to get. It's like the McDonald's of, like humanity you know to yeah, people McDonald's in the fire, transgender though. community cannot <laughs> fuck with her at all absolutely not they must they must fucking hate her i'm sure they do I, i'm sure I, I, I would assume they do but i don't know i, I uh, we gotta talk to we gotta do some fucking on the street reporting what does ellen page Seven have to say news. about this shit bro? elliot bro elliot, elliot yeah, you fucking dead i forgot yeah. her name i forgot her I forgot but also his see, name. that's forgot his crazy name. too it's like come on what the fuck i'm gonna fuck up a little bit you know but yeah. also you're a piece of shit how sorry, dare you bad, yeah how dare you <laughs> sorry sorry sir i mean ma'am my bad damn bro you know, but that's the thing elliot yeah elliot page i bet i bet elliot page don't fuck with caitlin nobody it seems like nobody fucks with caitlin i don't know bro to be honest i mean is there last name jenner yeah jenner i almost said kardashian but like, yo, like, it seems like her running for governor, everyone's like, yo, fuck that. Fuck that. Because what what is she going to bring that's better than fucking Gavin Newsom? Probably, I, don't I mean, know, I think everyone, they're trying to get Gavin Newsom out, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro. But this get is, rid of that fool. That was Joshua Fabia for fucking. Hell, this literally the guy goes, with the grizzly bear. You see the commercial of the guy with the grizzly bear? No. Nah. There's a, I thought it was a joke. I was like, <laughs> this can't be real. It's like, this guy's like, I'm going to, I'm like a bear. I'm going to eat. All I'm a bullshit. bear. And it's like, literally, it ends with him walking with a big ass grizzly bear. I was like, is this a joke? It literally looks like the corniest shit, but it, knew, it was like raw. There was even like a raw in the video. But this is what Ugh. I'm saying, man. This literally goes back to what I was talking <laughs> about, fuck? how celebrities are not of this world, but they think that they understand what the regular person is going through. And you fucking don't. You don't know. You've been so detached, especially people born in wealth. And that Jenner family, yeah. that Kardashian family, you were born in wealth. You don't know anything about regular people. Yeah. Like even Kim Kardashian posting this shit, she goes like, Asian people are people too. 
No shit, bitch. Like, what? Did you see that? She was like, hashtag she Asian. She said that? Yeah, like shit like that. It's like, oh my God. Like, I know you think that I'm you're saying something right nice. Now, she, just bro. Forgot, she, she forgot to add a question mark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Asian people are Asian. Asian are people? Too? Too? Like, I didn't know huh. that that was the cause that we're behind. Like, we're not even, we're not even like considered human beings. We're like, yeah, yeah, we are human beings. Yeah. <laughs> fuck, bro. That's so crazy. But that's what I'm saying. This is how detached wow. they are, man. Yo, Crazy. that's so funny. Psycho. Oh my God, Kim Kardashian, man. I, shout out to Kim K, man. Shout out to Kim Kardashian. The Pepsi can thing. The it's original a, Asian a, supporter, yo. Like her, <laughs> her fucking butt implants, which are so ridiculous. Yeah, man. like, like, come on, like bro. you're already this beautiful, beautiful woman, and then you let you don't need that. You bro. let you let other people tell you how dictate how beautiful you are, and it fucks you up in the head, man. Listen, I'm not telling a woman how what to do with their body. Your body is your fucking body, but just don't get ass implants. Yeah, like ass just don't, implants. Don't, don't do that. They don't just look do good. glute bridges. Do fucking hip thrusts. Do Honestly, fine. they look bad. Yeah, they look they shitty. Look weird. Because Kim's legs are fucking this They're too thin, thick. and their ass, her ass is fucking this big. Yeah, it looks crazy. It doesn't make sense. It looks crazy. Like the, the, this beauty standard that women are set to is just too ridiculous now in this city. Like you have yeah. to look this way or you're not Bro, considered all, beautiful. All the girls in like West Hollywood and shit, they all kind of look the same. They look exactly the same. They got the Their same lips. The same. Their eyelashes are four feet out. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, and, and just... That's the thing I really don't like about LA. Like, I like a lot of things about LA, but that like whole vanity thing is so gross. Yeah, yeah. like the superficial me... aspect of it is like, uh, why? yeah, because the then fuck? we gotta look at ourselves and be like, what are we gonna like, fix? Like, straight, you know I'm I mean? telling you, all these other cities, not these huge metropolitan cities. I'm talking about outside of Los Angeles, New York, whatever. Regular folk, they don't give a fuck about this shit. They don't give they're, a fuck. They're yeah. the majority of this world. And you you walk into this city and then you see it all around. It's like none of you, every single one of you have forgot what it's like to be a human fucking being. Yeah, right. And what humans look like and what people should really care about. Yeah, yeah It's bro. dumb. And then you're holding on to this idea of beauty that will never last you. You are going to fucking die and be in this dirt just like me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Nobody's going to give a fuck about how hot you are. Especially when they're walking around in LA and shit. With their lips all crazy, drinking. It's not even just women, shit. too. By the way, it's these dudes. They're <laughs> no, getting of Botox now. Yeah. They're getting their lips done too. It's like you look fucking stupid, guy. People are crazy. I'm trying to get some Botox. I don't understand. <laughs> people, people walk or, like look in the mirror and don't go like, I look like a fucking lunatic. Yeah, <laughs> there's just there's just some things in LA that this are so LA looks that are unacceptable. Fantastic. <laughs> you know, good lord. Yeah, that sucks, man. Imagine like feeling that way. That would that'd be really rough. That yeah. is rough. That's a miserable existence for sure. Yeah, dude, Before that. we wrap up this podcast, we do have to get on to the last topic, which is uh Joe Budden. So Joe Budden, if you guys want to talk about this, shout out to Joe Budden, bro. Joe Budden. Joe if Budden. Some co-hosts. I'm right here. I'm available Monday through Wednesday. You know, please, dude. Joe you can't even get through a story without stuttering, you bitch. Yeah. That's true. Anyways, <laughs> Speaking I feel about like Joe Budden would be nicer to me, though. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't think so. <laughs> so you drag my ass. Joe bro. Budden is like can't defend a guillotine, though. Damn. Shit. What's hey, up? you don't you don't know Joe Budden like that. Shit, what's up? Joe Budden. He, shh, all right, you right. <laughs> yeah, you right. I was talking it. spicy. All right. Talking <laughs> spice. Okay. Talking spice. So Joe Budden is known for his very very popular podcast, the Joe Budden Podcast. His name and everything else. He has two co-hosts. He has Rory and Maul, right? Uh, I listen to the podcast occasionally here and there. Joe Budden is somebody who could who can fucking talk to a doorknob. That's that's his skill. Mm. That, more than more so than being a rapper, uh, a battle rapper, uh, industry rapper, or whatever. His best skill is his ability to talk about anything, which is why his podcast does really well. He had this whole beef and drama with Spotify not offering him enough money. Took his shit off the Spotify mm. platform. There was that whole issue that he had, and you know he's very good at sensationalizing his personal beefs or whatever. Not too long ago, him and the the, the cast members said that uh, they were going to put the podcast on hiatus because they were going to go through therapy. Never, ever heard of myself, a bunch of three heterosexual dudes saying that we need to go to therapy together. <laughs> Never wild. in my life. Yeah, yeah. Is what it is. I mean, I'm not a part of this LA world. I don't know what's going on. I thought you guys just fucking duke it out and then, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. hash out your differences. Yeah. So they decided to go to therapy or whatever. Turns out it didn't work out well for them. Rory and Maul are now fired off the podcast. Mm. So now it's just Joe button mm. and which is kind of crazy because i guess the dispute is that rory and maul feel like they deserve a bit of joe button's legacy um and kind of what he built with them with the podcast and i think it's a fight over equity mm. like i deserve equity in this company how long have they been doing the podcast with him six years mm. yeah six years and um, he was paying them though he was paying them a paycheck yeah uh and but I they think, wanted like a slice of the i think the they business. wanted 
this is a weird <clears throat> topic, right? Because a lot of companies go through this, right? Depending on what what the situation is, right? There are people who like Joe Budden who has built up his name, built up everything else. And so he decides to pay people like cast members, right? Yeah. There's other people who start a podcast and they go, I'll give everybody a piece of this and you guys own it all equally. Um, you don't see that a lot. It's usually not that not the case unless the people bring something to the podcast that allows <clears throat> the podcast to grow. If not, then they just kind of cast it out. It's like building a TV show and saying, hey, I'm going to pay you guys out. This is what it is, right? If the podcast makes money. <laughs> <That's dumb. laughs> Y'all need to watch this a little more. <laughs> <laughs> These please. motherfuckers need some paychecks, please. <laughs> hey, please. Yo, help us out a bit, man. Hey, we're just happy to be here. I'd get them, move out of my office and come to this fucking shit all, huh? <laughs> <laughs> we're all moving in together, yeah. by the way. God damn it. <laughs> um, and it depends on what people feel about it. Some yeah. people are like, okay, well, Joe Bunnan built his name. Joe Bunnan was a huge name. Rory Malt, nobody knew who the fuck they were. Yeah. Right. And so he brings his friends on and he chops up, has his podcast, and they get a paycheck from it. It's a good deal. Yeah. If they're able to make a living off this dude's podcast and they're they're just showing up, you know, I feel like a paycheck is pretty fair. But mm -hmm. if you're, we know some people that have podcast situations where they do other things, like they edit, they produce, or they do other pieces to the production that are pivotal for the fucking podcast making money. You know, mm -hmm. some some guys do ads and they they reach out and they do all this other stuff. So I understand if they have a cut in that. That's different. Most but, people don't even do that, dude. Yeah. They like producers. They, they, producers, they get paid out. Yeah. They go, hey, this is your salary. Uh, you'll get paid whatever, uh, 50, 60, 70, 80K a month to produce this, and this is what it is. Yeah. And, right? and for a lot of people, it's like, that's kind of nice. That's fucking solid. Yeah. Right? So it's like, I mean, for me, let's say I was a part of Joe Bunn's podcast, right? I know I don't really have a big of pull as him, right? Well, let's say like I didn't even have this, right? I was just the comic and, um, Nobody knew who the fuck I was. So you had like 10K followers or some shit. Even less. Let's say 5K followers, right? Yeah. Nobody knew who the fuck I am, right? Mm -hmm. And I got brought on and Joe Budden was like, hey, I'm going to pay you to be a cast member. I would never in my mind think that this is just my opinion. Other people might think differently. Yeah. I wouldn't want to own a piece of his stuff because I know Joe Budden built his name off of the stuff that he did and yeah. people are watching because of Joe Budden and I'm an addition that somebody else could have You eaten. bring value. I bring value. But... It's a. I didn't bring. But the you're money. also getting paid for the. Value. I'm getting paid exactly. Yeah. So I was like, that sounds that sounds like a fair deal. Yeah, I think like okay, if I'm if you're making millions of dollars on this podcast, yeah, I wouldn't mind a, a paycheck. Sure, but I don't think I would step in and feel like I own a piece of that company. Here's a great example of that, right? And I'm not saying it's just from my side. We started up a show called Just Kidding News. I didn't. I don't own any bit of Just Kidding News, but I've been on Just Kidding News since day one, and mm -hmm. I've actually helped build that channel in terms of like format how to make jokes everything up yeah. this is this is what i did yeah right here's the thing i didn't put up money to build it i didn't cast people i didn't produce it mm -hmm. i just came in a kansas cast member yep. i never asked for a piece of jk news you know yep. why because i don't deserve it mm. they built it up with their name their brand they did the groundwork i just came in and i made jokes and i this, yeah. i did the comic stuff yeah yeah do i feel like i owned a piece of that company never in my life yeah i would never think that because i played my role as a cast member and i got paid for it yeah. And I feel like that's what I yeah, deserve. Yeah, that sounds fair. Yep. So a lot of the times what happens when this, you know, people kind of get big headed. They get entitled. They get entitled to somebody else's glory. Well, Joe Budden has, this is just my opinion about it, right? I don't know if I agree with how Joe Budden went about it. Yeah. What did he do? He just went hard on them? He fired them on like the pod, like he, he fired he, them on the podcast. And then, and then for the, you to watch it, I think he put it behind a paywall. <laughs> yep. It's, it's pretty so bad, funny, dude. dude. <laughs> Pay for this hey, shit. Patreon, hey, you want to see it? Pay for it. Pay up. Pay up, bro. So, so let me just read this shit. In an episode of his podcast that appeared on multiple platforms on Wednesday, fast forward, um, Button and Nadeska Alexis, the letter of blah, blah, blah. It's all about timing of the universe, Button said around 19 minutes into the episode, which he since noted will now live on Patreon will now be live on Patreon. Uh fortunately for AK, when I left Complex, that gave him more leverage. And he knows that. That stick, that stick up time. Everything Joe wanted, I wanted too. So, no, he's not leaving such a beautiful situation, but AK has seen me when I was doubtful of information. AK has seen me when it was me against the company. AK has seen me when it was me against him, me against the desk. He's able to read the fucking tea leaves, man, and that's an important piece. Nowadays, Budden said there's, there's a mutual respect between himself and academics. As for Rory, Budden claimed that a relationship was altered after Rory took issue with Budden still having contact with academics. Button, who said he doesn't know academics to be a liar, also noted that he has suspicions of Rory having sent people to academics' home. 
In one clip from the interview embedded below, Budden says he he's fired Rory. Rory feels like he has so many options here. Somehow, he still feels like he's running the show and he still feels like he has choices and options. He still feels like he's entitled to more. Rory, you are in breach of your contract. And from this point forward, you are fired and you are not welcome back. Uh, but in around 22 minutes in also spoke on a recent podcast in which Rory and Maul returned to the show after a break. That episode was important, according to Bun, because he had a six week window to speak to the audience. And he felt that it was important for Rory and Maul to have a chance to say what they wanted to say. That's the stuff I'd be trying to explain to the suits, the creative. Un- uh, so deeper into the new episode in question, around one hour and 27 minutes in, Budden spoke on the importance of chemistry in his work. That's the stuff that I'd be trying to explain to the suits. The creators understand chemistry. I wanted to say to them, yo, dog, I don't I don't know what's going on right now, but the chemistry ain't there. Mm. And he just goes on. And he's basically just saying them like you're kind of like overstepping your boundaries. You know, like you kind of just don't know what your place is or something like that. Yeah. So I don't know what their relationship is per se. I personally have, have never had a dealing with people where it's ever went bad like that. Everybody felt that it was mutually respectful, right? Uh-huh. Let's just say like this. If this podcast was making a handsome amount of money, of course these guys are getting checks whenever they come in. Everybody would. JK News, when JK News started uh-huh. making money in the beginning, nobody was getting checks. You know why? Because there was no money there. Yeah. Nobody did. Yeah, but, that makes sense. But then when we all got a Sweat fat equity. deal... Joe and Bart took us all in the room and they gave us a fat check, dude. It was ridiculous. Yeah. Man. Like I was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. Because it was, it was, it was a lot. They of take money. care of their people. That's sick. Yeah. Everybody who comes on JK News, they walk away with the check because the company makes money. That's yeah. dope. And they and they get it. And nobody walks away with the unfair pay. Yep. You know? Your boy working on that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> your boy working on it. We got yeah. fucking knit socks and we have drinks. That's all that's what I got right now. That's what we have to offer, and it's fire, bro. Yeah. yeah. And it's fire. Yeah. You know? And so, like, yeah, I understand if they weren't getting paid. But, yeah, of course. But, we're getting but, paid. Yeah, but that, these guys, Rory and Maul, who are they? I don't know. What right. do they do? I was just look. I was doing some research on them. No shots on them, but it's like one of them I think is a music producer, and then the other guy I don't know what he does, Maul yeah. or whatever. But at the same time, it's like you can't bite the hand that feeds you. Sometimes, also, too, aren't you guys friends? Yeah, yeah, aren't you friends? And also, you're getting paid. What the yeah. fuck is the issue, bro? And yeah. when you Shut were, up. and when you, and here's the thing too. This is what happens. It's greed, right? Kinda, right? When, yeah. When I they so. came, money always fucks things up. Because if it was like that, you truly valued who you were on that podcast. Like you knew who you were before you stepped into that room. Say, hey, Joe, I know my value. I know I can make this fucking show pop. And with all three of us, if we do continue this forward, is it possible? Or do you think that I would like a piece of this? Yeah. Right. But instead, you waited to see like, oh, is this show going to be popping? Let's see what's up. Yeah. And then it became really popping. It became very lucrative. You were getting a paycheck. And then you go, wait, now I deserve a piece of this. <clears throat> but you never thought about that before when your value wasn't that big before Joe Budden put you, put you right, on. Right, exactly. Yeah, and that's, that's where true. it becomes very problematic. Also, too, stop coming up with your hands out like this. That's how I feel anyways. Yeah. Make your if, own bread, bro. Bro. What's your own business? You can always do something else and use your brand and make it bigger. You can sure. take this paycheck that Joe is giving you and the clout and then go start your own podcast aside from him. Do other shit and blow your shit up. Yeah. Because you yeah. have that power. Exactly. Yeah. It's there. Yeah. Like don't don't wait for Joe Budden to keep giving you these fucking handouts. <clears throat> you're you're worth more than that. According to you, you're worth more than that. Yeah. If that's true. Put your money where your mouth is. Yeah. Get that fucking paycheck that Joe's getting you. Take that clout. Open go, something else and go do buy both. Some, go buy some Bitcoin. Yep. Just make it work. <laughs> do make what you got to do. Yeah. Yeah. I personally, I mean, I, like I said, we're reading on, I'm reading this stuff from the outside from what he's saying to them. They're friends, so I don't know how they talk to each other. Yeah. If they're going at it like that, it doesn't seem like you guys are friends. Yeah, yeah. right. So it sounds weird. Yeah. I, it does sound like they're out of line, though. I mean, I, like I said, I don't know the the context, like everything that's going on. But if it's just this, then it sounds like Joe Budden's in the right for sure. Well, especially like, what the fuck is wrong with you, bro? You're getting paid. Got, yeah. When he fronts all the money for studio time. Yeah. Producer, why would you? Like, are you putting in on that? Did you build this? Are, like, are you are you putting up, you know, the money for the rent where you guys do your studio? Right. Yeah. Like, also, he brought all the eyes. I'm pre- exactly. like, And it's also like, what was, who were you before you hopped on? Are you bringing on guests? What is your value? Yeah, what are you yeah, like, What do you do besides... Come in and talk just, for an hour. Exactly. Because that's the easy part. Yo, you tell anyone to show up and just talk for a couple hours and they're going to pay you money? That's fine. But what else are you doing to provide value besides the actual content? If you're getting paid for your time to produce and, and, and do content, that's one thing. But you ha- I feel like to be involved in the, the inner workings of getting the money, like 
and asking for a bigger payday, you have to be doing more than just showing up. It's like this, right? And I'll put it to you like this. When, when I get hired to do an acting job, do I say, hey, I got fucking half a million followers in this. I need a piece of this movie. Yeah. <laughs> you know what the fuck? You yeah. should try that. That's, a, that's probably yeah. a good auditioning. You know who strategy. might do that? Will Smith might be able to do that. Yeah. Because right. they know. Like, but also, they're making a movie for Will Smith. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if I'm playing a role, you give me a check. I do my job. And I know that you guys have to deal with everything else. Yeah. And then I walk away. Yeah, right. Like, yeah. Is You're it done. fair? Not, it kind of is. And depending how you look at it, right? Yeah. Like, that's like when people get mad at like Jake Paul for making all this money for, for, doing boxing while all these other fighters are not getting their due but it's also like he's bringing the eyes yeah he's bringing the people yeah. as much as you like this guy or not he's bringing eyes to him and it's undeniable how much attention he grabs yeah so at the end of the day it's like you got to provide something you yeah know? i don't know man i just don't like it when money gets fucked up with friends especially if you're getting paid yeah. That's the and it's, I'm pretty sure they're not get paying, getting paid pennies. I don't know the actual logistics, but they're definitely not getting well, paid. Well, they're getting like, paid like three hundred bucks an episode or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, if you're, like, make, if you're making seven figures on your podcast, you better not be paying them three hundred bucks a fucking episode. Yeah, yeah. Because you know? that's a little too high. <laughs> yeah. And if they're shooting like an episode a week, it's like, dude, I'm making seven fucking figures. It's like, dude, you guys are gonna walk away with at least six, seven grand a month, something, seven grand yeah. a month, something. Yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah, what it is. Yeah, 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 Especially yeah. if it, they're the only people. They don't bring on guests. Yeah. They're the only ones doing the podcast. And if the podcast is fire, you know, what yeah. I mean? like that's what matters at the end of the day is the content, right? Like yeah. that matters first, but then the other shit that comes along with it is very secondary. You know, I let me mean, tell you something, man. This there's no producers for this. <laughs> like, yeah. like, I get up, I hit this button, I set up the camera, yeah. I hit this button. I had to paint this room myself. <laughs> shit was rough, dude. <laughs> shit was fucking rough. You're like, you guys have a producer? Like, dude, every time do? I go on a podcast, they have a producer. They have somebody feeding them articles, topics. Wow. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> yeah. And they're like, hey, so who produces your stuff? I'm like, you're looking at it. <laughs> Me, like, dude. Producer. I, I'm, I'm producing this stuff. They go. Everybody has a producer. I'm the only one without a producer, dude. Wow. Damn. Yeah. We gotta get your producer, bro. I don't even have an editor. Everybody at least has an editor or producer or something. I do everything. You do everything. Myself. You edit everything. Yeah. Audio. Dude, the boss still ain't making money. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, bro. Hey, you man. Y'all need yeah. to watch this shit, hey, bro. Click on those ads every now and then, man. <laughs> you know when I get those sponsored ads? Like you guys have to click on and sign up for these trials, man. Yeah, I fuck dude. with these companies. <laughs> Help us out. I got. I need to give them a check. <laughs> Magic spoon. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean, what else? People are like, oh, David. <laughs> hey, man. He's, Hawthor. Uh, yeah, pe people are like, it's like, yo, man, David down to earth, he don't buy it. He don't buy dope shit. It's because I can't. <laughs> it's not a life choice, bro. <laughs> I be living fucking low key. I save up my little pennies and then I, you know, get dividends from businesses and I reopen businesses because I don't got it like that, dude. Shit. <laughs> the fuck you? Hey, but just wait, just wait, bro. People dude. really think I'm balling. It's so funny, dude. That's fucking <laughs> oh, hilarious. Shit. Yeah, you guys are fucking crazy. David balling kind of low key in his own way and shit hey he bought us you know he got his own kettlebell yeah i got you know the both flex kettlebells we got the both flex kettlebell different weights you know yeah you got the balls out there slamming yeah you got the a neighbors. couple slam balls those ain't cheap yeah, yeah i got you know those on mean? facebook marketplace yeah, got them yeah, yeah, really yeah. cheap kicking got, the walls yeah letting old ladies fall not picking them up cool. Hey, cool. okay so anyways guys this is, <laughs> <laughs> don't pick up my shame like that bro uh let's uh my standard podcast. effect guys it's real it's my standard <laughs> effect i didn't know man and she, you know what fuck that bitch all right she hey we're screaming in my neighborhood fuck that bitch. Hey, yeah, it's yeah, an hour now fuck her bro you mind your own business dog. tony hinchcliffe i'm i'm doubling down no, if you down, need baby. help ask for it that's all it is yeah you know what i mean hey man hey, that's Lady what it is dude up, bro. Yeah, bro. hey don't don't use uh fucking people's real plight for your personal shit yeah. if somebody disses you go ahead and handle that shit tony yeah. hinchcliffe stop saying the word chick, yeah don't say fuck. chick bro <laughs> You don't say it in the first sentence. Especially when you look like you're a part of the Aryan Brotherhood. You're not gonna you're yeah. not gonna get a pass on that motherfucker. What's wrong with you, dude? Yeah, that's wild. That's a hot one. Yeah, weird, dude. Go on your next set, drop an end bomb in the first one. Yeah, let's see, what, let's see what happens. And then walk off stage, just say that and then leave. Yeah, yeah. And then that's chill. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, guys, that wraps up this episode. You can find Nick at Nick the Ear, and you can find Pat at Patrick.t.miley. Oh, yeah. And we will see you all next time. Yes, there. Peace. <laughs>